This video has been made for students of the IB Diploma Programme who are working on their exploration as part of their internal assessment for mathematics. It's the first in a series of videos to support students who will need to fit a mathematical model to a set of data. In this video we'll be looking at how to choose an appropriate mathematical model based on the context of your exploration and the data that you have. We'll look at some of the most common types of model in detail and also make reference to some other models that might be relevant for your data. When considering which model to use, there are two important factors. It's essential when discussing the process of modelling that you consider both of these factors. The first factor is to look at the shape of the graph made by the data points. For example, if the points appear to line a straight line, then a linear model would seem appropriate. The second factor is often ignored, and yet is equally important, or perhaps more so, and that's to consider the context of the problem. For example, if we were to record the number of hours of daylight over a period of a few weeks, the graph might look like it could be modelled using a quadratic function. However, that would assume that the number of hours of daylight would keep increasing or decreasing at a faster and faster rate for eternity, and we know that isn't the case. So however well a quadratic model might fit the data, it would not be appropriate in the context of the problem. When choosing an appropriate model, you must also consider the domain of your data. Your model can only be assumed to be appropriate for data values within the interval of those you've collected. For example, a model of your heart rate during a PE lesson would unlikely to fit the data once the physical activity comes to an end. We'll now look in a little more detail at the different types of model that might be appropriate for your data. Remember, when you are writing your report, you must discuss both the shape of the data and the context of the problem when explaining why you chose your particular model. One of the most common types of model, and arguably the most straightforward, is a linear model. This is when the data points can be modelled through a straight line. You'll perhaps know this as the line of best fit, although it's more correctly called the y on x regression line. Linear models will occur when the two variables are directly proportional, although more commonly this is not the case. More generally, a linear model would be appropriate when a fixed increase in the value of the independent variable on the horizontal axis would always lead to a given increase or decrease in the value of the dependent variable on the vertical axis. Examples of linear models might be the distance travelled plotted against time for a train journey, or test scores against time spent studying. Linear models are particularly susceptible to problems with extrapolation and so need to refer to the domain of the data. For example, the weight of newborn babies against their age in weeks would typically follow a linear pattern for the first few months of their life, but the same model would not be applicable into teenage or adult years. Another common type of model is the exponential model, which occurs in many forms and is typically appropriate for naturally occurring data, although economic and socio-economic data will often produce exponential models. Exponential models come in two basic forms, exponential growth and exponential decay. Both are characterised by rates of growth that are dependent on the value of the function. That is, the greater the value of the function, the faster it is increasing or decreasing. Another important characteristic of exponential models is that they must have a horizontal asymptote. If your data points appear to be exponential, but the context suggests that there would not be an asymptote, then another type of function possibly logarithmic, might be appropriate. Other less common forms of exponential graphs occur under reflection in the horizontal or x-axis. Quadratic models have the shape of a parabola and are most likely to occur in your exploration if you're modelling the path of a projectile, for example the trajectory of a golf ball in flight or a basketball shot. The data will form a U-shape or an inverted U-shape. In the case of a projectile, the effects of gravity will give an inverted U-shape, and so the quadratic function would have a negative coefficient of x squared. The model has a line of symmetry through the apex, or highest point, of the data. Trigonometric models occur when the data points follow what is known as circular motion, giving a series of waves that increase and decrease in a repeating pattern. Examples of data that will produce trigonometric models include tide heights for coastal regions, the number of daylight hours over the course of a year, 
or physical models where an object is displaying simple harmonic motion. Trigonometric models are sometimes confused for quadratic, cubic or other polynomial models and so it's particularly important to consider the context of the problem when working with such data. There are some other models which might be appropriate depending on the data that you have and if you think you have data that fits one of these models then you should discuss this with your teacher. Cubic models or other polynomial models are unlikely to occur but might be tempting to use because it's always possible to fit a polynomial model to a set of data values. The most likely example is a cubic model when your context involves measurements relating to the volume of an object. If you think you have data for which a polynomial model is appropriate, you should first discuss this with your teacher. Reciprocal models occur when the two variables are inversely proportional. For example, the speed of a vehicle and how long it takes to travel a certain distance or the intensity of a light source depending on how far away from the source you are. Logarithmic models appear similar to certain forms of exponential model but do not have an asymptote. Measurement scales such as decibels used for recording sound volumes or the Richter scale used for measuring the intensity of earthquakes are based on logarithmic values. Finally, there are logistic models, which look like a combination of two different types of exponential model in that they have two horizontal asymptotes. Logistic models commonly occur with population data or other contexts where the exponential growth might be expected, but the growth would not be infinite. The number of people infected by a virus might follow a logistic model because, as more people have been infected, there are fewer people left in the population to become infected, and so the growth rate will start to slow. To recap on the process you should follow. First, consider the context of your data and decide which types of model might be appropriate based on the properties of that function. Using a model that fits your data values well but whose properties are not appropriate to the context will imply a lower level of mathematical understanding and might therefore lead to a lower mark on that criterion. Next, check that the data fits the shape of such a function and consider how you should adjust the parameters of the model to improve the fit. Most importantly, if you have any concerns about which model to use, speak to your teacher. Mathematical modelling can be a lengthy process and it will be frustrating to discover that you've chosen an inappropriate model after investing so much time. You should now be ready to begin the process of modelling your data.